<clears throat> this is a second lesson on, on counting. Okay, and then after that, we're going to study probability problems. <clears throat> so principle counting, do you remember? If a procedure is performed, uh, it involves several steps. If you each step, you have a number of choices to do the job, right? Then the, the number of the ways to complete this procedure is going to be the product of those numbers. That's it, okay? So if you follow this idea, uh, then you can always find the uh, uh, correct answers, okay? So here's the first problem, you know, similar to the one we discussed before. Uh, I want to know, okay? <clears throat> I want to know how many okay, uh, three-digit, yeah, we did, let's review this problem, three-digit numbers, okay? Uh, was different digits, okay? So the question is, so that means such numbers like one, two, three, you know, but by four, four, one is not included, okay? This is not, it's not the one we want, okay? Uh, so, so how do we count those three digit numbers? First of all, yeah, you write down all the possible digits you're going to use, okay? Those are the digits you can use. Then <clears throat> the procedure to count those three digit numbers, just like, just like uh, the procedure to write down a three digit number, right? One by one, okay? So you have to write down the first one, then second and third one. The third one is called a unit digit. The second is called tens digit. So how do you write down the number, right? First of all, this is a three digit number, right? So this procedure involves three steps. So in each step, you need to figure out how many possible ways to write down a digit, right? <clears throat> then you just look at the product of those numbers. Now I already see some students submitted answers. Great, but they, I got two different answers. Quite disappointed, <laughs> okay? Sophia Chen and Emma, they are different answers. Yeah. So let's do it. So for the, for the hundredth digit, which is on the left, right? And you look at those 10 digits, how many digits you can choose? Nine. Although there are 10 digits there, including zero, but zero cannot be the first one. So there will be nine choices. So you put it here, it's there, there will be nine choices, okay? Nine choices, okay? Then you put a nine here, okay? This is the number of choices in each step. All right, and then for the second, the tenth digit, you're supposed to have 10 different choices, 10 choices, right? It goes from zero to nine. But remember, the number you're going to write down, all the digits are different, which means the second, uh, the tenth digit cannot be, cannot be the one already selected for the hundredth digit, right? So, although there are 10 digits there, but you can only use nine of them, but they don't know which nine. But anyway, you have nine choices. So you, you have nine choices, okay? Still nine choices. Then for the unit digit, okay? You can still use uh, this 10 digits, but except for those two already used, okay? So only eight available. So that'll be eight, okay? So that's the total number of, of such integers is going to be the numbers of ways to write down the three digit integers, which is going to be the product of, of those numbers. Okay? When, you, when you multiply this out, that's going to be 648. Okay? So this is where we, we solve the problem. Okay. Uh, Now, then we look at, this is a review of the last problem. Okay? Then we're going to look at the two different type of uh, 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 problems. Uh, we call it, uh, yeah, sometimes we count the order, sometimes does not count, count the order, okay? So we are going to, uh, so how many words you're going to, if you, are, you can, uh, how many words of three letters you can, you can get 
if those letters are selected from the following group of 10 letters, okay? So the question is, yeah, this is okay. How many uh, different, yeah, I put a question mark, that's not the real words, okay? Uh, when uh, uh, when uh, can be formed using the letters from the group A, B, C, D, how many, uh, well, how many different words oh, by uh, using three letters, okay? Actually, this is not the, the three letters. Using three um, different letters from A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? So now you have total six letters you can choose, but the word you're going to get the three letters are all different okay so they're not, they're not cannot you can you cannot repeatedly use the same letter a a a so it can be a e d for example right it can be e c f okay so question is how many of them okay uh, this is a pretty similar to the the last problem okay so Right, it's, you, you can view them as like a digits. So you have a uh, six digits there, right? So you just write down a three digit number, okay? So now how do you do it, right? Is this procedure, yeah, this procedure involves a three, you know, can be completed in three steps. In each step, you have to figure out how many uh, choices, okay? So for the first one, you have six letters. So you can choose, yeah, you have six choices, okay? And then for the second one, you only have five because they are, must be different. Then for the third one, you only have four choices. Okay, so the number of uh, such words is going to be six times five times four. Right, that's going to be one hundred twenty. Right now. So here we actually count the order. That means A, E, D is different from E, A, D, okay? We view them as different. We view them as different. Although they're, cons they're each consists of three, the same three letters, right? So be careful, yeah. Sometimes you look at the condition. We put them in the order, in a row. So we view A, E, D is different from E, A, D. Okay, because the, otherwise, when you switch two letters, the, the meaning will be changed, right? All right, so now the next problem is, it's still similar. I have a student, six students. Their name, A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? I'm going to select them to form a team, but there's a team, there's no order in a team member, okay? They are, they're just as a group, okay? So the question is, how many uh, uh, a team of three members can be formed uh, from from uh, from the from this group? Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, I, I just named them ABC, yeah, you know, that's three different names, okay? Uh, how many teams of three members can be formed from, uh, from uh, those members are selected from this group, okay? So that means um, A, E, D is the one group, but this same as E, A, D, okay? There's no difference, we, we, we think that as the same team. Okay, the same team, doesn't matter. We don't, there's no leaders here, okay? So those two are identical. We don't tell the difference, all right? So at least you have a, you know, at the very beginning, okay, you can 
uh, have, have 120, right? If you, if you let those three people stay in a row, then you're going to have 120 different arrangements there. But you find out not many of the rows, they are actually form the same team because they just exchange the position, right? All right, so we do have some students that need to get an answer. Sophia and Emma, right? So any, uh, Amy, uh, Amy got, great. Okay, any other students? Just all the three girls, any boys can give answers? <laughs> okay, any boys here, right? All the boys are here. <coughs> you think the 24? Okay. Okay, you have to give me three reasons. Okay, when you say 24, you have to give me three reasons. How do you get a 24? Right? It's not, it's not like a guessing giant. There's so many numbers you can pick up, right? They're slightly different, right? And we do step by step, you know, right? First of all, we, we, we just want to pick up three letters, put it in a row. Then AED is different from EAD. Then we total get 120. Okay, definitely now we are going to have a, uh, but they put them together as a team maybe, then we cannot distinguish them. AED and the EAD the same team. Okay, so you have to, you, you are gonna have a smaller number. Okay, so, so uh, the idea is, is very simple. Uh, the formula is that whenever that's, uh, uh, so, so here, here's the idea, okay. So first of all, you assume they're all different. They're, they're in the order, okay? They're, you, they're, they're staying in the order. So total, you get 120, okay? Maybe, uh, you know, they just uh, ex, uh, change the position. But you will see that this, this, okay, how many permutations you can get for given three letters? That's three factorial, six total, okay? Three, yeah. So, so you will get even for given for any given uh, uh, three uh, for any given three letters, you can have three factor factorial, which is six different permutations. Okay. Now, I just trying to explain to you why we have to divide by three factorial. You can rearrange those uh, uh, three letters. Uh, three letters. You can arrange them in the into uh, into uh, 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 six groups, okay? First of all, you get AED, then you permute them. Total, you get six, uh, uh, six which is three factorial, uh, three uh, many uh, diff different permutations, and the DAE, for example, right? Total six, okay? Six. But then, then you write down all the others. You find out 120 can be arranged in the six rows, okay? 120 words can be arranged in six rows so that in each row, all, all those letters are, you know, the, all those, uh, those words, okay? They, are, they, are, they are contain different uh, letters, okay? So, because we arrange them, if they have the same letters, we put them vertically, you know, in this direction. So anyway, those six groups there, that's the reason uh, the number of, of teams is gonna be 120 divided by six, which is 20, okay? Yeah. Yeah, first of all, you assume that the order is counted, then you have 120 total, 120. Okay, right, that's 120. But you put them in such a way, uh, three, six rows, and how to get six rows, uh, three letters in a different order will be in different rows, okay? Then you total, uh, yeah, you're gonna have six rows. Then in each row, there'll be 20 uh, 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 different words there, okay? So that's why 160 divided by six. 120 over six is 20. So 20 is the number of the words in each row. Right? Total is 120. 
So this that's the reason why I have to divide by one utility. Now let's try to derive the general formula. Okay, here's the formula: the number of uh, yeah. Let 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 let's rewrite these numbers. Okay, this one hundred. How do you get one hundred twenty? One hundred twenty. We got is uh, first we have six factorial, five factorial, four factorial, right? And this will be three factorial, right? That's what we got. Now this number can be written in slightly different way. Okay, this number can be written in the form six times five times four times three times two times one. Here's three factorial. And then I also put up by three factorial here. Okay, so that will be canceled out, right? Then the numerator is gonna be six factorial and three factorial or three factorial. <coughs> All right, so this is a, uh, now let's look at, uh, 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 let's look at uh, another problem. Okay, here's a more general, we're gonna get a formula here. So the number of teams, okay, of K members, uh, which are selected from from a group of n members, k is of course smaller than, is given by, okay? So how do you get this? You can derive the formula, okay? So let me write down the formula, it's n factorial and k factorial n minus k factorial. Okay, how do we get this formula? It's very general. You know, look at our, our example is a, n is six, because you have six members in the group. So the idea is, is as follows. Um, first of all, yeah, first of all, you have a group of uh, uh, n members, p1, p2, p3, Blah, 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 PN, okay? So the bunch of people there. So first of all, you want to form a team. First of all, you, you, you put a K, K chairs here, right? So you're gonna select one by one. Let them sit in, standing in a row. So first one, you have N choices. So you have N. For the second chair, you have N minus one choices, okay? And for the third chair, you have n minus two choices, and so on. For the case chair, uh, you have n minus, I think n minus k minus one, okay? So yeah, don't be confused. So this is a product of the number of the arrangement of those key members. They are selected from, they are selected from the group of m members, but, Okay, this number can be written in the form n times n minus one, n minus two, and so on, n minus k minus one, right? Then you start from n minus k, then blah, 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 it's again is one. And you can divide by n minus k, because that's easier to, 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 to calculate. Those two will be canceled out. So the numerator is just n factorial, so denominator n minus k factorial, okay? Yes. So we're trying to do our formula, All right? So this is a formula, okay? For the number of the, for the number of the of the row, different rows of k members, they are selected from the group of n members, okay? <laughs> but if they form the team, there'll be a different story because when the team when you form the team, when you find out if you permutate any, uh, if you have a selection of key members, but if you permutate them, then you don't get the different teams. So, so the number of, of uh, number of the teams of K members is going to be this number divided by K factorial, okay? That's the reason, okay? So this is, this is a formula we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to use. So the, you, can, you can simply write as N minus K factorial, okay? All right, so let's do, if we use this formula, then it's very easy, okay? 
uh, how many committees of six members can be formed from uh, yeah, if they are selected from from a class of 22 students. Okay? So you can form a committee. The committee consists of six members. They are selected from a class of 22 students. All right, how do you solve the problem? In this case, n equals 22. You are going to select a six members, so k equals six. So then n minus k is going to be 12. Okay? Yeah, n minus k is going to be, uh, uh, no, 16, not 12, okay, 16. All right, 22 minus six is 16. So the answer will be The answer will be, if you use a formula, it will be 22 factorial and six factorial divided by 16 factorial. This is a very strange number, but it's integer, okay? So you can, uh, how do you simplify it? Uh, let's write down in a slightly slight different way. 22 factorial, will be 16 factorial and times 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and this will be 16 factorial. And also have a six factor, it's one times two times three times four times six times five times six. So 16 canceled out. Now we have to cancel lots of terms, okay? So 20 and the four, five canceled out, right? And the six and 18 becomes three. And the three, three canceled out. So only two left, two and 21. 22 is 11. So this will be 17 times 19 times 21 times 11. The product of three other numbers. Be much easier, you just multiply this out, you get a, a, a number. You can, then you can multiply this out. Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's do the multiplication, right? So 17 uh, and times 19 times 21 times 11. Uh, this will be 74,613. Yeah. So Toby's already giving me the answer. <laughs> okay, so this, this, is, this is how many different uh, 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 team members you can get. Surprise to you, right? 22 students, you want to select six students to form a team, a committee. And you get so many different committees. Yeah, right? All right, so our next problem uh, is going to be how many different words one can get by permutating the letters in <laughs> letters in in the word okay uh, let's say <laughs> okay let's use this following word okay S L E E P. Okay. So let's do this problem. <laughs> okay. You have a 
five letters here, right? But the two letters are identical, right? Right? The two letters are identical. If if you you can mark it different, S L E E P, one and two, right? If those are two different, then you have five letters. Clearly, you need to you are going to get five factorial, many uh, different words. Okay, we call the words does not have any meaning. Okay, just like uh, passwords, you know, right? So that no meaning. Okay, but you will see that because those two e are distinguishable, the two e are distinguishable, so you have to, you know, the formula says that you have to divide by by two factorial, okay? So this is a result, okay? Because I, I will explain to you why you have to divide by two factorial. If that's three letters, you have to divide by three, three identical letters to be divided by three factorial. So this is going to be, you know, one times two times three times four times five, divided by two factor to one times two, canceled out, okay? And that's gonna be 60, okay? Why you have to divide by two factorial? Because uh, you can, you can, uh, first of all, you can assume e, e, two e's are different, right? Then you divide in, into two groups. Uh, first group may be, Something like that, uh, E2 is also always on the left-hand side of E1. Uh, E1 is always on the left side of E2. But then you also can write another group, LPE1, okay? So, so you essentially got two groups here, okay? Each group, as you see there, total is 120, right? Total 120. Okay, but if you have divided into two groups, each of them have 60, 60. Okay, why have these two groups? Because if you assume E1, E2 are different, then you have 120. But if you arrange them into two groups, so that in each group, E1 is always on the left side of E2. In another group, in second group, E1 is always on the right side of E2. Okay, then you have two groups here, okay, and uh, those two groups actually give you the same uh, uh, word because we, we cannot tell the difference of those two words. Uh, let me rewrite again. Yeah, we cannot tell if we take switch them. It's L, E2, P, and the E1. You see, L, S, L, E1, P, E2 is, diff is, a, is the same as S, L, E2, P, E1. If you remove the sub-index, two and one. So that's why you have to divide by six, divide by two factor, okay? Good. So similarly, uh, we can, uh, yeah, we can do the following. Uh, let's see, here's a question. How many different signals each uh, consisting of uh, consisting of uh, five flags can vertically okay Can be formed from those five those five uh, flags. Actually, three of them, are three identical red flags, and two identical uh, white flags. Okay. So we're going to hand them vertically, right? It's one, two, three, four, okay? Two of them are white, others are, uh, yeah, two of them are white. That's just one of the, of the possibility, right? And another one will be uh, 
let's just give you some a couple examples. Red, red, right? And like this, right? So you can see that the different signals. We want to know how many of six different signals you're gonna get. Okay, I'll give you a minute, okay? I want to see who is there and call their names. All right. So Amy, Tobias, give me the answer. Sophia at 10, okay. Daniel Lu. Catherine Young, I haven't heard about you from you. Are you doing the problem? Okay, good. All right, so look at, you assume first of all, those five, leg, five flags are all different, right? If you assume that five flags are all different, if you hand them vertically, it's a, you know, that's, you know, then will be five factorial, right? But since the three of them are this, uh, the three of them are distinguishable, three so identical, you have the other three factorial. Then two white flags divided by two, right? So then it's going to be, you know, it's going to be uh, uh, three, five factorial, three factorial, four times five, and three factorial, and two factorial, and you cancel that, and it's going to be 10. Now, the next problem is a challenger problem. If I not hand them vertically, I hand them around a, a circle, okay? Maybe I use a ball here, okay? I have a five balls. Okay. Yeah, you can do. Uh, uh, you can uh, here's here's a, here's a draw this picture like it's better. You know, like a like a circle. You, and and you 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 hang on this way, right? Okay. Let's let's. Uh, so I put uh, five flags here. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So now, yeah, it's. It's challenging. I have four, two of them uh, will be red. Uh, three of them will be red, right? As a two is white. <laughs> okay, I change the way I handle, it, right? So, how many? Now you can. This can be turning around. This, okay, the 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 wind will brew it, and then you can rotate. I want to figure out. How many different uh, 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 patterns you can get? Okay, so it's not like uh, you know this one's on the south side, other one's north side. I just want to see the internal uh, relationship should be just uh, you know should be the same, right? And how many different of them? Okay. Okay. Now, like how do you solve this problem? This is uh, will be uh, different. Yeah, so my question is, uh, yeah, I think about that when I write on the problem. How many different signals each, each consisting of five, Fragments hand uh, around the circle. Around a circle. Okay. That can be formed from three identical red fragments. and two identical white facts. Okay. All right. 
Uh, Emma says still 10. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, here's the way we do, right? I'm going to draw Assume they are their hand horizontally, okay? Not vertically, right? I have a Y. Uh, let me draw the line here. Not okay. Yeah, uh, uh, their hand uh, uh, along the vertical line. Like one, two, three, four, five, right? They're not form a circle. Okay, then I, I'm going to paint them. This is a red, I need a three red, right? This could be this one, it could be that one. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, I still draw five. One, two, three, four, and five, right? This time, uh, I'm gonna do the following. I I just move this around like this, going this way. Okay, this one we move it to the far left. Okay, so just just change the position a little bit. So this will become red, and then red, then red. Clear? Yeah, just shift to the right by one position. Okay. Now imagine you're going to form a circle, right? You're going to form a circle and a hand of that. So you will see, uh, you will see, you don't see that difference between those two circles. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, this place is a form glued together, right? This is a, this is a gap. Right, so I have one white here, one red, another red, and white, and the red. Okay, this is a cut point. This is a cut point. I just glue them together. Okay, and then you look at this next one. Yeah, you can look at the next one. Um, you still, if you look at the next one, you still, you will see that it's a, you will see that that's not, no difference. Okay. So this will be the red, right? And then this will be, no, no that's a, this is a still white. <clears throat> well, I'm saying that those two are, this two are actually essentially the same. Oops. That's the same, give you the same picture. Right. Yeah, the, the cutting point, this is a, you cut it here actually. Right. <coughs> They're the same. I, I don't see the difference. You only just rotate a little bit. You just rotate a little bit. You know, if you rotate this a little bit, and then you get the next one. So that means they're not, there's they're, they're no difference between them. So that those two correspond to the same uh, circle, in other words. Those two lines correspond to the same circle. How many different lines you're going to get total? You have five flags there. You just shift one each time to the left. So you can get five different, okay? You get five different, yeah, still there, okay? You get five different, yeah, five different lows here. Okay, but they all correspond to the same circle. 
corresponding to one circle. Okay? Yeah, this is the idea. Correspond five different rows by corresponding one. How do you get these five different rows? You just uh, shift the frag, and this one will go to here. You know, you get a different one, right? Just move around, okay? So, you, but, but they all give you the same type of circles, okay? So total, you have uh, how many rows there? You have 10 different rows, right? We already get that. That's why the number of the circles, okay? I just simply say called circles, okay? Is going to be different circles. It's going to be 10 divided by five, which is two. So you only get two different type of circles. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. And this is a little bit uh, uh, difficult problems. All right. Let's look at the next one. I uh I have a polygon. One, two. Okay, this is called one, two, three, four, five. Five polygons. Okay. Five polygons. Okay. My question is how many diagonals are in the polygon. Okay, so diagonals means uh, those. Those are the diagonals. Those are the diagonals. Okay. Yeah, connecting two vertexes. If this, if you connect two vertexes next to each other, then you get the edge, the boundary. So is that not called a diagonal? Okay. Now figure out that first. Then we try to get the general formula. Okay. So <coughs> Daniel Lu, uh, no, Emma says five. So it looks like a five, right? Five. Yeah. So how do we do this problem? Okay, of course you you know you can draw as many as one, then you find okay, I just count them. That's a one, two, three, four. That's a five star. <laughs> right? Five edges, just five. But if I yeah, this five, the answer is five, right? It's easy to see that five. Five edges. But if you have 100 polygon, okay, questions. How many diagonals are in the 100, or maybe 100 is too large a number. Let's like say, no, 32 polygon. Okay, 32 means you have a 32 edges. Okay, I'm not going to draw 32 edges here. Then you have so many there, right? All right, question is how many? Okay, you have to find the right way to count. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult. Right, if, if the edge, number of edges increases, if you use uh, the first messages but draw all of them, you can count them, that's easy, right? Now you have 32 polygons, you cannot draw all of them. Draw, you cannot draw all the diagonals. Okay. 
All right, so this is the idea. You label the vertex P1, P2, P3, P4, and so on. And this is supposed P32. Because you go around, you have 32 P, 32 vertexes, vertexes, right? All right, so for starting from each, yeah, from each uh, vertex, yeah, what is from each vertex, okay? How many diagonals you can get? There are 30 minus, no. You cannot, yeah, you cannot count the P1, you cannot count P2, you cannot count P32. So 32 minus three, that 20, 29 diagonals. Hmm? Yeah, because P1 is 32. Okay, hold on, hold on. And P1, 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 P2 is age, right? So P3, from P3 all the way to P31. P3, from P3 to P31, how many is that? 29, all right? Only them can form an age. Okay? So P3, you see? P1, P3, P1, P4, and P1, P31. Those are the diagonals, okay? So how many of them? 31 minus 2, 29. So there are 29 diagonals, at least all of them. Okay? Uh, so how many, because, because the, each of them is a point, right? So this is a diagonal, right? From P1 to P3, from P1 to P4, okay? So total, you have a 32. So 29 plus multiply 32. So you get 32 diagonals. But then you will find out, you find out they're double counted each of each diagonal. Because why? If you look at P3, P3, P1 is the same as P1 to P3. It's this same diagonal if, because if we don't talk about orientation. So that's why you have to divide by two. Okay. Yeah. You have to divide by two. The reason is, if you start from P2, then you have a P, uh, a P4, and the P2, P5, and so on. Then P2, P, uh, P2 definitely is P30, uh, P31, but there's a P2, P32, right? Yeah, you can get uh, all of them. Then you P3, okay? But the P3, uh, P3, you know, P1, and the P1, P3, they're the same. So that's why I have to divide by two, okay? So this will be the answer, okay? So this is a, a 29 times uh, some 16. And you can calculate 29 times 16 uh, is going to be, I don't have the answer here, right? 29 times 16. It's going to be uh, 463. Yes. Okay. So uh, in general, um, yeah, this is where you count. You know, you have to be careful. Don't count, double count it, because when you look at P3, from P3 to P1, it's already counted twice. So each diagonal, if you didn't exist, will be counted twice. Okay. First of all, from each point, you can get 29 diagonals. Then you go around how many points there? 32 points. So 29 times 32, then you get all the diagonals, right? But be careful because the diagonals are not oriented. So, so you have, they are identical, so you have to divide two. P1 to P3 and from P3 to P1, the same diagonal. So you have to divide two. Unless you say that the oriented diagonals, then you have the, direct, the product 29 times 32. Okay, so be careful when you read it.
Yeah. All right. So the next question. How many factors does okay does uh, seventy two have? All right, factors. How do you define factors? One is a factor. Okay, seventy two is a factor. But nine is also a fact, okay? Nine is also a fact. But how do you count them? Just, just too many. Right? So the fact is like a one, three, and uh, I believe that the 12. You know, that's just randomly right now, right? And I'm pretty sure 18 is also a fact, 20, right? Right? So there are just too many left. You cannot write down all of them, right? So Six. how to count the number of the factors does it have? Factor hmm? Factor yeah, first of all, in fact, okay, 72 is eight times nine, and eight is two cubed, nine is three squared, right? A fact must be in the following form, a factor, of 72 must be in the form 2 to the p times 3 to the q. What are the possible choices for the p? p is going to be from 0, 1, 2, 3. What is the choice for the q? From 0, 1, 2. Right? <laughs> so you basically, you're, you're trying to write down uh, a pair of numbers, right? You're just trying to write down pair numbers. PQ are selected from these two different groups. So, so how many pairs of such numbers there, right? And the, where the first number P can be 0, 1, 2, 3. The second number Q can be 0, 1, 2. So clearly, the number of uh, such pairs, ordered the pairs actually, Uh, order pairs. That is going to be four times three, 12. So there are total uh, 12 uh, factors, 72 of 12 factors. Right, so here's a here's a question. I have a check your list. What is missing? <laughs> you cannot list all of them. It's very difficult to list all of them. Okay, if you want to do that, you have to write down like a matrix. Right, you have to write like a four rows, three columns. You can get all of them. Don't we don't list all them in one row? Okay. So my next question, which will be last question is, I have a six uh, students, okay, will sit in a row, okay, it's three on each side. Okay, so this is uh, like a two sides here, all right? West, left, or right. Okay, so we have three chairs here. We also have three chairs here. Right? So there's a, there's a bar between it. Okay. And there's a restriction. Okay? Among them, okay, uh, are two 
people. Okay, let's call it Amy. Okay, okay, <laughs> and uh, Emma. Okay, so the question. So what? What are we doing? They are, they want to sit on the same side. That's a restriction. Okay, you want to put them in a row, but make sure Amy, the Emma, want to sit together on the same side. Not next. Not next next to each other. They just want on the either on the left side or on the right hand side. So how many arrangements, uh, how many possible arrangements are there if Amy and Emma uh, uh, sit on the same side? This is the most uh, challenging problem. if they must sit on the same side. Okay, remember the principle of counting. I remember the principle of counting. Uh, I give you one minute to think about that. I'm gonna then show you, okay? This whole procedure to assign the seats to six students involves several steps. And then you have to make sure the way you assign the seats, okay, we we'll make sure Emma and uh, Amy sit on the same side. How to do that? Suppose you are the teacher, right? Yeah, hint. Clearly, my hint is you cannot let the other students to select seats. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, uh, Emma and Amy say, oops, we have to be separate, <laughs> okay? One's on the left and the one's on the right. So you have to take care of those two first, if they want to sit on the same side. But there's still many options. Okay, principal counting is design, uh, uh, you know, the procedure, right? This procedure involves several steps. And then each step you have a number of options, but make sure you guarantee Amy and the Emma sit on the same side. One hundred forty-four. Someone says one hundred forty-four. Sixty. Unfortunately, got so many different answers. I, I, I see so many different numbers. I already find that one of them is correct. <laughs> okay. Johnson, are you working on the problem? Yes, I have. Uh, 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 okay, the answer should be larger than 100 is a number. <laughs> what? All right, so let's do this problem. So first of all, you know, as a teacher, right, you want to arrange the seats. You have to say, 
Why do you need one? No, no, no. One hundred. No, how many different possible arrangements, right? So you let Amy to select one of the six seats. So you know this is the way we design. Okay. So you let Amy step one. Okay. So let Amy to select one seat. Okay. So you say happy six possible seats Amy can select. Then step two, yeah, this is for Amy. Step two, you have to ask Emma to select seats. But the Emma will see Amy is on the one side, either side doesn't matter. For Emma, only two seats left. Because they want to sit together. Okay? Then after those two sit there, how many seats left? Four seats left and four people, four students left. Then doesn't matter. They just randomly pick up seats. So we four factorial. Four factorial many choices for uh, for other four students. Okay. So the answer will be six times two times four factoria is 12 times, uh, that's 24, okay? Which is going to be 288. So you have to design a way to complete these assignments and it involves several steps, right? And step by step. Doesn't matter, you can let Emma to choose or Amy choose, doesn't matter. But then you will uh, get six times two, then times four factorial. Okay. Uh, 